In this video, we will test new image to video feature from Minimax. I will test the most frequently used camera motion types with Minimax. We'll compare its output to Runway Gen 3 and Clink AI 1.5. Additionally, we will challenge the model with complex directions and compare results with the prompt optimizer turned on and off. Let's get started. I'm using the English version of Minimax. You can find link in the description down below. It's a simple UI with the prompt box and you have a very prominent create button. And on the homepage you can find some videos created by community. So now we have this image icon under the prompt box. This button allows you to upload an image and produce a video. So we click on this icon here, select an image, and then we write our prompt. For this first example, I didn't write anything complex. I didn't add any camera motion. I just described very slightly what's on the image. Edit an emotion and I described the bear's move. For this example, I didn't enable the prompt optimizer. And later in the video, we will compare results when it's enabled versus not enabled. And then you simply hit create. So our video is ready. The bear's movement looks quite natural. That's fine. We have some problem with the face here. It's not rendered so well. And overall, we have a very slight camera motion here. Really subtle, but there is a bit of a movement. And of course, this is coming from AI itself because we didn't specify that. In the next example, I wanted to add a camera motion. I wrote dolly in shot, camera zooms in. Just wanted to test, you know, and things got quite messed up. I definitely didn't get what I wanted and render was quite off. Then I got this shot, which I was extremely happy with. I really didn't add any camera motion or anything. I simply described what's happening in the video. The car moves on the road and I added action shot. And it did uh, quite well uh, with the consistency. But I was quite happy with this result. Then I switched to this one. And again, I wanted to try dolly out. The camera pulls back. It is a camera motion. But then it completely didn't understand what I wanted to do. And, you know, even though I didn't ask for it, dude started to walk. And it turned into actually a tracking shot. It didn't quite understood what I needed with the camera motion. In the next example, I wrote handheld camera, children are watching the sea. And handheld camera is definitely not here. So it's actually a quite a static camera shot. Frame almost is not moving at all. So at the beginning, they are looking at the sea, but later then they turn their head. So it actually did exactly opposite of what I asked. In this example, I added tilt down camera. So I wanted camera to go down and woman is walking slowly. I think this is the example where I came closest to what I needed, except of course she's walking backwards. So camera going down, it's here. And this is the first shot after trying multiple times that I had success with camera motion. And in the next example, I thought, look, maybe system doesn't get the camera tilt up, down, dolly in, dolly out. Maybe these are too technical. Why not just write something really simple? The camera follows the fire truck. So I didn't unfortunately manage to get the camera shot where we are following the fire truck. The moment of fire truck, I think it's fine and it looks quite smooth, but I didn't get what I wanted. After that, I said, okay, maybe the camera follows X format doesn't work. How about tracking shot? And with tracking shot as a prompt, I managed to get what I wanted. Of course, you will realize that there is a hand issue here where hand kind of answers to the corals, but Tracking shot, okay, we can accept it. And I decided to use the prompt, which worked quite well with the car shot before. And this time I wrote woman swims, action shot. But to be honest, this shot was much worse than the tracking shot version. I mean, first of all, it's a very static shot in comparison to what we ask. This is not an action shot. And there is some morphing issue with the glasses here. So I wasn't impressed with this one. Then I got a little bit upset and decided that, yeah, I actually just want to have a slow zoom in to the subject's face. I mean, it shouldn't be so difficult, but then this shot got morphed again. It's almost like it doesn't listen to my prompt. Okay, then I got this shot and shot itself is, I think, pretty awesome, but the camera pushes forward. It also didn't work. There is almost no camera moment here. It's a quite static shot, but I actually wanted camera to come closer to my subject. When we look at the video though, except one kind of like anti-gravity flower here, rest of the shot looks, I think, pretty fantastic. And the eye movement of subject looks quite amazing. It's a great shot when you look at it, but it's not what I wanted. As a last thing, I also tried crane shot. 
it's, which is one of my favorite camera motions. Well, you can judge by the results. So the, the bear attacks the man. It's, it looks more like they're attacking each other. It's a quite weird shot. And that's what I like so much about Minimax. It's so weird that it gives you a good laugh. So when it comes to Minimax, then I came to the conclusion that it does a little bit better when you actually describe the action and event in the scene instead of describing the cinematography or camera motion. If you want to use Minimax, I think you should focus more on what's happening in the video instead of trying to define the camera motion. Because frankly, most of the time it will ignore your camera motion request. It will just do whatever it thinks right for the image. In this example, she's dancing with passion, then greets respectfully. Actually, it successfully implemented consecutively what I wanted, the dancing and greeting. So that's really promising for the model. I tried another complex direction. So man aims and shoots with the pistol, then leaves the frame. So the complex directions were well received by the model. And it does especially well when you don't actually add any camera motion. However, without proper camera motions, it's a little bit difficult for me to actually work with this model because I need to be able to move the camera. In the next example, I tried a slow motion rifle shot and you can judge by the result. It doesn't have slow motion. It looked more like a firecrackers than actually shooting. So this didn't work out super well. So in this example, I wanted to compare Minimax output to Runway Gen 3 and Clink AI 1.5. This is the first output from Minimax. I didn't write or specified any prompt. I only gave the image to all models and wanted to see what they will do with this. I think Minimax output is pretty awesome. It looks quite good. It perfectly understood the depth. We have a subject close by and we have the waves. It understood the, the dynamic of the wave and when it hits the water, it splashes and this whole thing works in a harmony. It's actually quite impressive when you think about the early times of the image the video. These were quite mind-blowing things. So next output is from Runway. And Runway also did quite a good job. One thing I realized after working with Minimax, the Runway output feels like a little bit more slow motion. And it's not a big problem. You can definitely speed them up in post-production. But that's the first thing I realized that it tend to be a little bit more slow looking, a little bit more slow motion than Minimax output. And this is clean output. So I think it did also a fantastic job. Looks really amazing. To be honest, I think all models are quite close to each other. And it's quite impressive actually that all these models, because of probably the competition, they are getting this great. Let me know in the comments, which one is your favorite? I'm reading every single comment one by one. In the next example, I want to show you impact of prompt optimizer. So we have this prompt, the butterfly flutters its wings and exits the frame. And I'm actually positively impressed by the impact of prompt optimizer. And the whole motion looks much more fluid and smooth with the prompt optimizer on, especially the wing flutter and rest of the motion is quite similar. And if you have a simple prompt like this one, I would highly, highly recommend you to turn on prompt optimizer because it will improve the quality and especially the motion quality of your outputs. And last thing I want to show you is talking generations. And I have this prompt, she's smiling while talking. And I'm actually quite impressed with the quality of talking generations in Minimax. They don't have a lip syncing feature yet. I'm actually quite impressed with this shot because everything looks quite natural to me and it feels right. Well, I certainly wanted to show you more, but Generating these videos already took me hours because at the moment there are quite a lot of people want to test the service and I think there is like really overload. So generations for me are taking around 10 minutes per video. It's quite long at the moment. I'm sure they will optimize it in the future. But hopefully this video was truly helpful for you to understand a little bit better how Minimax image to video works, what the quality looks like and what it can do in terms of camera motion and what it can't do. If you found it helpful, please thumbs up the video and subscribe to my channel for more in-depth tutorials. See you next time.